she has, uh, not only does she stand very tall, and she has big um, orange and black eyes, she's also got her big long legs, big feet, big appetite, for about a six foot wingspan. This is the largest owl in the world. Now, if you've been here before, been to another owl centre, or just read stuff about owls, you may have heard that the largest owl in the world is the Eurasian eagle owl. And I've just said that this is the largest. So which is it? Well, it's both, really. I was just careful with my wording. The Eurasian eagle owl is the largest species of owl in the world. It's a huge brown bird that's adapted to living in big forests all across Europe and Asia. But nature also experiments with the design to try and find ways of improving things. So maybe if the Eurasian eagle owl was a bit smaller, it would be able to live in denser woodlands and forests. Maybe if the Eurasian eagle owl was bigger, it could cope with colder temperatures. So over in Siberia, it is known to be very, very cold. The higher up the mountains are, the colder it gets as well. So it's also a bit of a paler color than a Eurasian eagle owl. So that gives it camouflage on the golden mountainsides in the summertime, but it's also a little bit paler when it's snowy in the winter. So a big predator like this might also be able to take bigger prey. Now, you may wonder what does the largest type of owl in the world like to eat? And the answer is pretty much anything it wants, really. All sorts of different things are on their menu. People studying your Asian eagle owl have found over 250 different animals on their menu. They will eat mice, of course, but need a lot of them to fill them up. So they work up in scale. They will eat things like rabbits, hares, badgers, foxes. They will catch small deer. And people in Siberia have said that even seen Siberian eagle owls take on and win a fight with a young wolf. Now that's a pretty risky thing to do because a wolf is a predator as well. And if the owl makes a mistake, judges its attack wrong, the wolf gets a meal and the owl is the meal. So how does it catch a predator like that? Well, it catches it the same way it catches anything else. It catches its prey by surprise. So they sit somewhere high up, maybe the top of a tree, maybe a cliff ledge, a mountain top, and they use their excellent eyesight to look over the landscape to watch for anything moving. And they will wait for the animal to get closer and closer until all the owl needs to do is a swoop and a pounce. <laughs> there we go. So now you can see old time on the ground. You can see she's a very beautiful bird, the colours and the patterns, those big orange and black eyes. But uh, as she comes along the ground here, you can see she's got these really big feet. Now, the beak is not particularly nice to be nibbled by, but the feet are the business end of the owl. They catch and kill their prey with those feet, those talons and the strength in those toes. So when we're working with these owls, we have to be very careful. If they're in a bad mood, they can be really, really dangerous to us. So how do we know if they're in a bad mood? So I got a smiley face on today. But no, they, they can't smile like we can. So how do I know she's in a good mood? Well, I look at the things on the top of her head. Some owls have got what people call ear tufts. But they're not actually anything to do with their ears. They are just feathers on the top of their head. All of the owl's ears are on the side of the head like Howard's. Underneath the fog, we can't see them. So those things on the top of the head, they're above the eyes, and they actually move up and down depending on who the owl is in. And we've got those things on our faces too, and they're not ears, are they? They're eyebrows. Or I suppose calling them eyebrow tufts doesn't sound quite as impressive, does it? Not quite as cool. But if they are sticking out sideways, like they are now, that tells me the owl is quite relaxed and comfortable. If she was very angry with me, which happens, they stand up and point at the sky. If she was scared, they would be flat on the head. Now, when she's scared, she would want to fly away from whatever's scaring her. So it's preparing to take off. Now, as she flies now, what, what those tufts do? They go flat on the head. It makes her more aerodynamic. Go faster strikes for owls, perhaps. But when she stands and relaxes, they stick out sideways again. So that's how I know she's in a good mood or not, and how they can communicate with each other without hooting too. Altai here 
well, she's a very c cool customer here. She's only hooted twice in her entire life. She does all of the talking with those pups. But it's something that we've been learning about these owls. There is so much that we don't know about them or any other owl in the world. They come from quite remote places. People don't go out there very often. People don't go out there even to count these birds. Even British owls, we don't really know a lot about how many there are. A lot of guesswork goes out. So can you imagine what it's like in the, in the Siberian mountains? How hard it is to know if they are rare or common. When people do encounter them, they're not always very welcome. Some of these shepherds worry that these birds are going to take their lambs or their goats, and so they will shoot them on sight. Uh, other people do deliberately trap them and kill them so they can use their feathers, sometimes as trophies, sometimes the uh, indigenous people use them in their, their uh, customs there, but other times people use them to sell to tourists. Uh, people want something pretty on their mantelpiece or in a picture frame on the wall. Sometimes they use it in uh, clothing and hats. But I hope you agree that those feathers look better on the owl than they would on uh, someone's hat. So 